Okay, we're gonna. You think bats was the biggest problem out of that? Uh, no, I think how we played the game was the biggest problem out of that. <laughs> I know, but to first ban. Bots Perhaps we should uh, ban Aphrodite. Yeah, yes, there, there we go. go. It is good to ban. It is good to ban. Next, we ban Rama, and then we see what happens. I think I think uh, Ram ban. ban Ram? Uh, I think it's a fair ban. A lot of the reason we lost was that we got shit on in dual lane. Yeah. So, um, I mean, getting rid of Ram probably doesn't solve that problem. Mike would ban Hell. Yeah, I think that's reasonable as well. I I want to ban pressure characters. Yemoj is another pressure character, so I'm fine with that as well. I I don't know that tons of people can use Yemoj super well, so I'd I'd probably be pretty okay with. Yeah, they already got rid of Odin. That's a good point. So you're expecting a Hell play. I think Dilwad does play Hell. I think that's a good call. Yeah. Because I, I didn't... I was never on a team with Dilwad, but I'm pretty sure I subbed in some of his games. So we're going to first pick Uller. And I'm okay with that because it's pressure. Hopefully we play it well. If we play it well, it's worth it. So we'll and if you play it well, it deals with the ROM. It can. It deals with early game at least. Yeah. So they're going to pick Nike. We're hovering Achilles. Achilles is a good pick. Yeah, but why pick Achilles when you can have 8,000 HP? <laughs> and you can why not get another character that has 8,000 HP? Uh, possibly literally. Hera um, has been popular as of lately in the SPL. Reason being, obviously, CC that is not affected by CCR DR. Um... Polymorph is really good. Knockup is really good. There's a stupid shield. I, I have no more analysis than that. I am not a huge Hera player, um, but she's been popular in the SPL. Good players are making her look good, so fair enough. They're going to switch off the Nike for the Sobek. I think that's also fair. Sobek into Uller can punish him very heavily. Sobek Peel with a Hera can feel really good. Also is a bit more of a flexible pick mm -hmm. than the Nike. Agreed. Yep. It could very well be. I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they still grab Nike. Because mm -hmm. like you said, I'm betting that goes into support. But you can't yeah. know that for you sure. You can't know. So we pick Robin in the top three, which is questionable. We also pick is that Discordia. Like a super comfort pick? I uh, think. Like, I don't know. Yeah, Riley does enjoy Robin. Uh, he's good at Robin. Does a lot of damage with Robin. It can help with our early game. I, it's not the most early game assassin here. Something like Sir Cat would probably be more dangerous. Uh, but I could see maybe a hesitation of wanting to play Sir Cat into Hera. So, sure, Robin deals with CC. Sobek, Hera both have a ton of CC. Can be kind of scary if you don't have something super safe. So, I think it's reasonable. The problem for me is I don't think it needs to Why be top three. Three'd. Yeah, exactly. Is it ever going to get banned? Uh, but we'll see what we pick. Otherwise, maybe maybe we're just not picking good characters. Maybe that's our strategy. <laughs> we're gonna pick Hachi, which is fair enough. I uh, don't know why they didn't pick Rom. They're probably tired of playing with Rom since we keep giving it to him. I think Rom's the better pick here. Just straight up. Hachi's a bit safer against Uller because you get a runway rather than sure. Depending okay, on that, how, that's a reason. Like right, you get hit with stun, you get hit yeah, with the combo, enough. you go up and Rom ult. Cool, you're just gonna die when you come back down. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, fair enough. That's a reason. I still think I would have picked Rom. I think Rom is well. Rom, Rom probably has better wave clear early. Uh, scary though thing for Rom, you have to or you have to stand in the wave to clear it. Yeah. That's pretty spooky against Uller. So, okay, I'm seeing more and more reasons why this Hachimon seems good. Okay, they banned Ganesh Yorm. We really don't like Ganesh, huh? Uh, Susano ban is fair. D uh, we already picked Discordia. I was going to say don't let us pick a Yamas, but that's not a thing. <laughs> and Daji... Seems like a panic ban, guys. I don't know. So we didn't consider the Sobek flex, I don't think. So this... Their team already looks terrifying in late game. We're banning Daji exactly into Uller. I don't think they're going to be over there that much. I don't think we got ganked once last game in duo lane. And you still leave up Sirket and Pele? Like, I don't... 
Like if you're gonna yeah, go, yeah, I think for the Pele is scarier. Or... Yeah, uh, I'd have to look at the assassin tab to have a better comment on what I think. I think, we should have been. I think, I think there are I numerous think items yeah. that were more bannable than Daji. <laughs> I don't think we've seen Daji competitively played for months. <laughs> I mean, right. Like and Mike makes a good point. A... Daji into Robin feels real bad for Daji. Yeah. And Bottom line, like I don't they... like the ban. Yeah. When they maybe. played him before the kid went off with Daji, like maybe they know it's some sort of a comfort for them, but that I say, let I'm just play. trying to be nice. Yeah. I'm trying to be a bit nice. So we pick Arshio and Amy. Um, I can see the Arshio appeal, actually. Into Hera, uh, mobile mages feel pretty bad against Ardeo Root. It's pretty reasonable. We've got a bunch of Roots, actually. Pretty easy, confirmable CC. I don't hate it. I don't love it either, but I don't hate it, so fair enough. Uh, it can deal with, deal extra pressure. It could even be Arshio solo, and we could put Ama support. I think that's reasonable here. Let's just draw. I think the Ama is, is a is a pretty reasonable pick as well. Helps us with our objectives. Right now our objective DPS is kind of garbage can. It will be Ama solo, will be RDO support. They picked set last. Um They were hovering a Wheelix the whole time. I don't like a Wheelix, so I like the set better. I don't love the set. I I think he gets peeled really easily. We don't even have a ton of peel, and I still think we can peel the set. Your argument is, well, sure, but they have more peel than we do, so he can probably dive longer, which is fair. Um, Mike says he would have picked Thanatos. I think I would have picked something. Like if you want something quasi-tanky, I think of a mana pick there would have been really sick. You still could have picked Nike uh, in the jungle. I don't know that that's actually that good conventionally. I think it's something Sino makes look very good, while in fact is actually quite difficult to play with. I think Thanatos is a fine pick. I would have picked something with a little more pressure than the set, I think. Because right now you're kind of, like your wave clear is pretty good, but your fight's pretty garbage. Right now you've, you're just kind of peeling away as, as, as Chaos side here. Okay, enough chatter about Chaos side. We're here to talk about the order side. So, number one question when you go into game. When do we win the game? That should always be your first question as you're drafting. When are we winning the game? Um, well, I'm looking at your comp, and I'm looking at their comp, and I'm saying if we haven't won by 25 minutes, we've lost. At least now I think we can win the early game, which is something I can't say of the previous set, or the previous yeah. game. I think we do win the early game here, and I want to see us do that. If we win the early game, we have a really good shot. The Discordia passive plays well into that strategy. I think we can really try to win off of our Uller. I think we can really try to win off of our Amy. And if we get ahead on a side lane, it can then flex into the mid lane and start pushing our lead there as well. We do need to beat the shit out of Set. We need to be beat the shit out of a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> about five of them. They're on the right side of your screen. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, that, that's that's my opinion. I, I don't know, Coco, if you have a different one. No, I agree. I think the... Like you said, I think 25 minutes is... Uh, yeah, the, the game needs to be well in hand by that point. Uh, I think you have to... I think you just... I think you should be trying to just abuse the shit out of the set in the early game. Yeah. I think he gets his first That's fair. speed buff, and I don't think he gets another speed buff. I, I think you either I think you're abusing Hera, I think you're abusing Set. Um Sobek's kind of hard to abuse. I think you can abuse Kefri. Um and I think you can even abuse the Hachiman by abusing those other characters. If you can yeah, translate I... your lead elsewhere. Uh Alex suggests that we get some real time support and find where they live. Um the police have been called. They'll be at your apartment shortly, Alex. Um, but no. <laughs> I mean, if we break their knees, they can't play Smite. Think about it. Yeah, they can. Uh... <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> All right. Just sit in a comfy chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Discordia early is doo doo, um, but so is Hera's fight. That was actually something um, that I'm pulling off of. I think it was the latest Backliners podcast. So that was yep. Barra, Ducky, and uh, Aggro that all had kind of an agreement that, hey, you know, Hera's early wave clear is pretty good, but her fight's pretty shit. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna generally accept that as true, and I'm going to accept that Hera's early fight is poor. Um, Hera is very bad into... Easy, confirmable ranged CC, particularly Roots, because she's a mage without an escape. So we have, count them, one, two, three Roots, and guess what, baby? They're all in the mid lane. So I think we can punish the Hera pretty well. Set, for the same reason, does not do well into Roots. Um, obviously a little bit better off as a set in that respect. But still not great. He forces his little... His little, what's it called? Teleport. That's the word. And uh, he's he's in a bad way. Don't don't be in me. I am good at word. Okay. Ooh. Okay. We're invading. I actually like this. I'm glad. I'm glad we're gonna we're gonna spank him early. He's actually looking for it, which is clever. He all oh, the timing. This man just got CS timing, dude. He's not even looking. It's over. Yeah, it's that's all that's over, that's baby. That's Kill the Kepri. Kill the Kepri. Kill the You're... Kepri. Ignore the Kepri. Ignore the Kepri. Ignore the Kepri. So what we did there, boys, is we said, hmm, let's try to kill the one with beads. So it looks like... And we didn't we... <laughs> even care about the purple... Okay, I'm sorry. I had to take my headset off and parade around my room for a few seconds. And I'm going to pause the game because I'm irate. Okay, we had a great purple buff idea. We said, guess what? We can bully this Kepri early. We can deal with him. We've got great early fight. We've got a stance dancer. We're going to pull some moves on the dance floor and dance all over their stances because we have more abilities than they do. And I was so ready to get a kill. All we had to do was body block the fattest fucking hitbox in the video game. <laughs> Instead, we fought them. We got beads. We teleported away after we got beads. We let them take their purple buff. We didn't fight them, even though we have the best dance dancer in the duo lane. You're when we know the Hachiman too. doesn't have beads, we know what abilities they have, we know they can't get away, and we said, yes, please, have this purple buff. We're not going to fight you. I know they have hog. I don't give a shit. We're fighting them. We don't let them get close enough to that buff to use the fucking hog. Instead, they got their buff. Moving on. So far, we have done one thing right and about 50 things wrong. It's about a minute into the game. Let's see how the rest of it goes. I'm going to watch mid lane so I don't kill myself. Okay, we rooted the set. This is good. Um, I'm still accepting the proposition that Hera has a bad fight. We made it look really fucking good right there. You're just standing all the damage. We don't stand in the wave. Hera don't stand in the wave. Minions. Don't stand in the wave. <laughs> don't stand in the wave. <laughs> By the way, I've heard that it is bad to stand in the wave. Okay. We're no longer standing in the wave. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. I think that was a good fight to take. Um, I don't know if we missed abilities, or maybe we walked into the Hera ability just a little bit. But um, I think I, that's an acceptable lost first blood. I feel like it was a good fight to take. We were on the right page. We made the same call. We went on the same characters. The character we went on was probably right to go on because we know he doesn't have his teleport. He definitely doesn't have beads to go on the character without beads. I like the continued aggression. Uh, I like all of this. The problem is we don't know where Set is. He is unbeknownst to us in the duo lane that we should have pressure over. Maybe we do know he's there. Oh, now we know he's there. See, guess what they do? They pick the character that doesn't have beads and is low HP and they go on him, even if it's the support. I'm still salty that we didn't kill the Capri at level 1. 
I'm going to wake up tonight in a cold sweat and think, oh my god, we didn't kill the Kepri. And it's your fault. You, right there. Right. I'm looking at you. And I think, right, like that, they did the, like, first part. Hey, of... I like this. Oh, well, that's a good thing. We're invading. So the other side of the, the world didn't work because we forgot that we like fighting. Um, so we're going to come over to the other side of the world and let our Amy get ahead against the Sobek, which is good. We got the blue invade off. We know the set isn't in a great spot at level 3 to fight us, even if he does show up. This time we're not going to be a pussy, and we're actually going to fight them. And we're going to get both blue buffs, which is very good. We're wasting a ton of the set's time. I'd like to get a ward on this back camp's pretty, pretty pleased princesses with bows on top so that we can invade that a couple times. I don't like that we're giving up rights here. By the way, your back camps are up. That's cool. Go to the right mid camps, pretty please. Oh, by the way, your minis are up. That's cool. Can we go to the right mid camps, please? We're, we're, we should not be giving up contested farm for free right now. I know the Hera is level 5. We watched the Hera go to red buff, however... And ours is already down, so we should be on contested farm, not on these guys. I know they're easy to kill, and they're pretty valuable for the amount of time you spend on them, but guess what's more valuable? The contested farm against the level 4 set that we know doesn't have beats. Okay, but fair enough. We're not, we're not inting. Just making questionable choices. I mean, this is fine, right? You, okay, you're you're backing. Okay, hold on. So, Richard, you have a you have a really instinctual way of playing the game, and I can respect that because, in a lot of ways, I'm with you. I play the game very instinctually. I I look at numbers when I coach, but when I play, it's very much this seems good. Let's do it, and then figure it out later. You're looking to back here. Um, but I can tell by your health, you've got 400 health, right? And you just watch the Sobek use his ult. You're not in any real danger here. The only thing that you need to be aware of is where the set is. Um, and I don't think the set kills you in a gank. And maybe I'm wrong here because you don't have boots and you know he at least has boots too. Uh, or at least you think he does. It's at least debatable that he can catch you pretty consistently. I don't think you die to the gank. Um, that's something that I'm not super sure about. We're double backing in mid, so maybe we're worried that we don't see him. Maybe that's why you're just trying to conserve your health here. Bottom line, I, I think you could be a little more aggressive, but I, I do appreciate the caution. But guess what would mean that we wouldn't have to be super cautious? We had wards on the enemy jungle at four minutes into the game. Moving on. Okay, so the Kepri has gone movement speed boots again. We should be looking to punish that. We actually went horrific emblem on our RDO. That's interesting. It's the first I've noticed. It's four minutes into the game. Uh, did we not? Did we use it on the purple invade? I hope did we get did. Pop? Uh, either way, we should be probably punishing the the Kepri right now. MP5 boots are really great for Kepri. Kepri struggles with mana. It's just a fact of your bug life. Um, but you should be cognizant that he's pretty killable. It does seem that we're kind of abandoning our dual lane again because we're trying to feed our Amy. I like the half rotation, um, and we've got to make sure we get these right mids this time. The problem is nobody can cover in mid, so we're actually going for this hero pick. He's kind of inting. We missed our abilities, so he lives. I think we missed our three, our Robin three. Maybe it was just CC mooned, I'm not sure. I'm a little yeah, unsure why we're still four. Yeah, Hera, Hera used beads, so you got Hera beads all. That's pretty good. That's a good play. Go for that. Um, why didn't we do these right mids here, boys? Okay, so we're going for the red buff invade. So fair enough. So we know the set's going to be at right mids. We're going to go for the red buff invade. Then we're going to. That was a good attempt. You missed though. Whoa! Where was that aimed? Whoa! Where was that aimed? <laughs> Hera should be dead. Or oh, maybe we're lagging. I can't tell if you blinked or if you lagged. Okay, so we get the kill anyway. If that was lag, that's just unfortunate. Uh, but we whiffed a yeah. lot of abilities there, boys. It was, again, good thought process, right? We go for the red invade. We actually dropped it. Okay, cool. 
I thought we didn't get it for a second. I was about to rage again. Um, <laughs> cripple him, cripple him, cripple him. Okay. We need to have a talk. Now, Peter. Peter. You are scary bear lady. Very scary. In fact, bear lady does good damage. However, your cripple when the enemy is trying to teleport and does not have beads. And you are a big scary bear lady. Don't use your bear one instead of crippling and then using all of your abilities and then using bear one while crippled. And it is dark. Discordia can hit at the same time. Is very good. CC first. Ability second. This is the traditional my Athena always tries to three before taunting kind of thing. Well, <laughs> you Athena threed before you taunted here. If you would have crippled him right away, um, you might have killed him actually. So, yeah, I think that just I think all of Disco's abilities hit if you do. If they were up, and I'm not maybe Disco abilities were down, and maybe you I were just trying it. to one shot him. Oh well, in that case. Yeah, she threw it at the set, the set teleported out of it. Don't Athena 3 before you Athena taunt. Even if you're not playing Athena. I don't know where the mobster came from, but he's here. We were rushing two hey, seconds ago, and now we're at Thalion. I was going to say, I you know. had a couple of, couple of voices. All right, well, I'm going to get off for the night, though. Okay. Enjoy raging at some more <laughs> uh, Yep. lovely gameplay. Oh, I will. I very much will enjoy. <laughs> I'll catch you tomorrow. Can can hear the I don't know coming from Brandon. Yeah, I can hear it too. By the way, Brandon, don't do that. It's annoying, even for me. Okay, so they have finally wisened up to the fact we are invading Blue Buff. Uh, the Kepri is here, which is really cool, because now we have another person to kill. So this is a fight we should take. I like that we're taking it. This is a really good route. Into Excellent. Perfect. Good job. We punished the Kepri. That's perfect. Good play. Seven minutes into the game. They have a lead, unfortunately, but I, I like the decisions we're making. So I'm pretty okay with it. They do get the buff. I think that was sub ult secure. I don't know why it was still pulled. Maybe they pulled it. Uh, I wasn't watching that closely. But I like the idea. Execution, a little off. Idea, good. I, I'm kind of at the stage right now where I'm more about the idea, good, than the execution, good. So I'm, I'm happy to see idea, good. And this is consistent with us needing to win the game early. The fact that we have an Uller over here keeps things even, even though we're kind of abandoning him. So again, idea good, execution needs some work. There's been a couple of those moments this game. Like the purple invade, right? Idea good, execution, eh. Uh, dropped kill in mid, you know, idea good. Same same kind of ma mantra here. So I'm okay with it. This is actually sick. We know that he just used his horsey. Our path thing's a little... I guess he's just really fast. I don't know if we could have pathed much better there. And the Capri's here too. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that rotation. As I probably would have done the same thing and realized I'm dumb. Uh, again with the cool M boots. Eh, if you find you're running out of mana, you want MP5 boots actually more than, more than blue boots in my opinion. And uh, they help you more get around the map. Something Capri is going to just out rotate you forever. Okay, we got, we actually got double killed in mid, so that's really bad. Uh, so we horrific, so did we look for a kill? He gets all in, we heavy rotate. They kind of half rotate. Come back, come back here. Hera is literally Argus at the moment. We whiff an ability. We clear the wave. We just got comboed, right? So why does this happen? It happens because we don't have top vision. Uh, we don't we don't see them path in. I think if we did see them path in, then that that was a pretty big mistake. So just be careful that sort of stuff. But again, I like the idea of trying to bully the Hera. We're just kind of whiffing on a few execution things. In that case, it was kind of vision and information that we were whiffing on. So you actually probably can live this. I think you had to ult the Kepri pull. I think if you ult the Kepri pull, you got a chance to live it. It's pretty close, though. 
So if you're trying to live through it without ulting, I, I can accept that as well. I think that's fairly reasonable. I would always go for the ult. Uh, I know you love this item because it gives you power and you like power stuff, but I don't know if I don't know if I love it here. I don't know if it's more valuable than something else. Like uh, like I don't know. I don't think Zerkers is is the play, but I could be convinced otherwise. You could go Zerkers. You could skip the laning item altogether. I think that might be the attempt here. Um, but I think if you're going to skip the laning item altogether, you don't go for the sustain booster. In Caticus Shield, it's kind of a quasi-brawler item. Uh, let me pause it here, because I, I, I do kind of want to discuss this. Uh, I think you you kind of commit to your build chain, and I'm pretty sure on Ama you want cooldown stuff. So I think if that's your choice, um, to you know, because you're an Amaterasu, you're trying to team fight first and foremost. I think you might look for either kind of a soul lane Vimana style build. And I'm not 100% on those builds, so I'd have to check that before I try to try to argue one. But it would probably involve a Toxic Blade and some other items. Um, or I think you go for just a straight-up Breastplate or Genji's. Personally, I would have gone for Genji's here, because I think the Hera is the one that's killing you, uh, not the Hachi or the Set. But I could also understand breastplate here because it gives more cooldown and you're probably not dying to the Sobek. You're getting ganked by a set, not by a Hera most of the time. I, I could see arguments for either of those items. I don't love the Katika shield. I think there are just better options. Because again, you're trying to... In my opinion, how I would play Ama, and I'm not an Ama player, I would try to cycle through my abilities as many times as possible. I think the MP5 and the... Um, the cooldown on Genji's and Breastplate both work extremely well for that. And the tankiness is very good as well. And it, you can still go into a quasi-offensive item like a Void Shield later if you wanted to. Void Shield's still very good, by the way. Um, it's It was almost a buff, the change, in, in my opinion. It, in fact, I think it probably was more of a buff than a nerf to change it to percent pen. Okay, we're taking stock of the situation. It's about 11 minutes into the game. We're really trying to win this game through the early game, and our side lanes are where we wanted to do it. We're not super succeeding in that. I think the enemy team is stalling very well. Their mid laner has a substantial lead over our Discordia, which we knew might happen, um, but the problem is our side lanes aren't as explosively ahead as maybe we expect them to be at this stage. I think a lot of that's our execution. I don't think I don't think that's picks. I am I am accepting of this draft. Uh, but I, I think a lot of it is execution. I think that's what you'd want to look at in this game. Because I think our ideas and our gameplay are relatively sound. We're just kinda missing where it counts. Okay, so we're invading blue buff again, which I'm relatively okay with. Uh, we get it pretty quickly, and we're able to zippity -za, zippity doo dah out of there. So this time we learned from our, our our latest our latest error under the tier one. We use the ult really quickly. We try to do some turnaround damage. They whiff the Kepri ult because we whiffed Robin ult, so we really just whiffed. Uh, I'm surprised they're not comboing the Robin, but I guess they just get to combo Peter anyway. And the rest of our team isn't really in a position to do anything. Yeah. So they made a really good rotation, right? And because we rotated first... So this is something I do want to point out. When we rotate first to the blue buff, right? The enemy team, assuming they see it coming, and I think they did, they have two options, right? If they see it coming, they have two options. They can say... We are at a position where we can pull gold, and we either force them to run away from that buff to defend the gold, um, or we get gold fury, and they get a blue buff, and we're pretty happy about that. I think you make that decision if you think you can zone the enemy ADC, or whoever happens to still be in the area, uh, effectively. In this case, it's an Uller, it's a little sketchy. Sometimes the Uller gets in there and just yoinks it on out of there with a quick eat over the wall, 
and sometimes uh, sometimes you get it. I, I don't think it's a 50-50. I think it's considerably better than that, especially when you've got a Hera that can just Argus it, and the Argus can tank the whole thing for you. Uh, but I respect the decision to rotate to blue as well, because they think, well, we can rotate to blue if we think we can win the fight. They think they can win the fight. They obviously did. So they rotate to the blue buff. They take the fight. They win the fight. They get their blue buff. They get your blue buff. And then they probably get Pyromancer off the back of it as well. But when you rotate first, when something like gold might be an option or pyro might be an option, and they see it coming when their fight is better. Uh, and that's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of conditionals in there. But this is a it's a, it's a complex game. It's a MOBA. Uh, so you kind of have to be thinking of this sort of stuff. Uh, you're you're giving them the opportunity to respond to you in a way that's very, very effective. Normally you do want to force things, and I do like forcing things, and I do like trying to invade blues, but you have to be in a position to win the fight if it should come to that, and I don't think you are at this point. Clearly. Either that, or it's an execution thing that I'm missing, and then you actually could have won the fight, except for X, Y, and Z. I'm, I'm not sure uh, how favorable this fight is, uh, I tend to think it was a loss. I, I don't think they're falling short on decisions at all here, Alex. I think they made very good decisions in the early game, and I think the execution was poor. I think they did set them up. I think I think UAUC, you put yourself in a position to win this game with the decisions you made early, and you missed abilities, and you made a couple of a couple of bad decisions. Oh, that, was, that could have been a sick strife, but we didn't know they were both there. Like the bad decision to not continue fighting on purple, and a couple of whiffed abilities otherwise. I mean, execution, you just gotta hit your abilities. There's not much more to it than that. Ooh, we died in 2v1, so that, that kind of blows. We never acted up, and you're never killing him. This is rough. How did this happen? This is actually really bad. Do we just get all end? I feel like we shouldn't be able to get all end here. What leads up to this? Okay, so he clearly wants to fight you, right? Pokes you in the wave, you beads, good axe. Run to your audio. Run to your audio. Run to your audio. No, 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 no. No, okay. Okay, hold on. So, a little bit, uh, some decision points here. Uh, he was standing in the wave. You were not. Uh, your earlier abilities were down. Run to your guardian. Your guardian can help you. Instead, you kind of kited here. I think you could have stopped autoing, which feels weird, but you can juke some autos, get to your audio, and then take the 2v1. This is... Uh, this is like the CSGO equivalent of peeking before your friend can help you, right? If you're trying to take a trade on a kill and you both peek one at a time, you're giving him two 1v1s. You gave him a 1v1 when you could have had a 2v1 if you played a little more patiently, which is hard to do in this situation. Like, that, that is a hard decision to make. Um, but he played that pretty well. I think the Hachiman played that pretty well. He recognized that. I don't think a lot of players are going to recognize that. I do recognize the name Griddle. Um, I think he is a good player from from the vague impression that I have in my brain. I recognized him at the beginning as well. Okay, so we're in a little bit of a rough spot now. Not as rough as last game, perhaps. Um, actually, I'm going to strike that. I think this might be rougher than last game. Our late game is even worse. Now we only have Discordia. And arguably Ama, but I don't think so. So I'm kind of speeding through this at this point because here okay so we're looking for a pick on the hachi which is good he kind of rotated weirdly we need to get out now though that's unfortunate i don't know if we could have gotten out of out faster than that if we do the caprios there once we get the actives time to run 
I think we probably should have known the Capri was there. <clears throat> we either saw him on wards or should have. So we went for the yeet on the gold, and they're just going to fight it, right? So we're never going to win this. This is the losing battle that we're fighting. So we're actually going for picks. They're... Okay, those two played that really poorly. We're actually kind of owning. Hold on, we're owning. It was a terrible shell from the Capri. Plucked him at the carry that's trying to live. We're lagging at him. Excellent. What we like to see, we ran to our Guardian. Our Guardian gets to help. Good cripple. Good root. Good body block. I don't know if you need to. I don't think the Sobek's killing him. Good self peel. We're peeling really well into the Sobek. It was actually pretty well played by us. So we actually kind of owned that fight. Their, um, their Hera and their um, set got really cocky and just kind of like ran at us when they're when they're everybody else was on gold still i think they had a miscommunication that we capitalized on pretty well and uh, our ama was able to dive super well i think we just finished pridwin there and pridwin is probably a really sick power spike here ton of effective health with the cad shield healing that you do have it's going to do a lot so in this instance the itemization uh, probably paid off in that burst instance and now we've got the cooldown that I was looking for as well. So it looks like he is, this is probably going to be anti-crit, I would imagine. So we can just forever run at a, run at a Hachiman. But that was that was actually a pretty well played fight. We played to our outs. They they misplayed pretty poorly. And they miscommunicated on where they were going. And we were able to stick to it. I think if Kefri had a better shell, that's going to be rough. I, I didn't really watch Peter for it. It's too far, but I, I don't want to go back to it. But undoubtedly, there there is almost always something you can do better. Oh, the apple actually hit. That's kind of that's kind of troll. I want to rewatch this fight here. I wasn't watching it very closely. Good subic peel. Hit the one, the set dies. He's not that scary, bud. Okay, let's rewatch that fight. Oh, this is actually really good. Okay, so how does the fight start? Uh, let's take stock of our information. So our RDO can see three people on gold. We know the set's here. We know Richard's rotating, but we know we have to wait for him. So that should be number one, right? So number one for, for comms, in this situation, we're waiting for our soul laner to rotate. He's pretty big. He kind of won us last fight uh, pretty well by just kind of YOLOing at their back line. Um, our Discordia's not super up there yet, and our Uller's coming out of base. So this is a 3v5. So... Y'all motherfuckers better be running away. That's the opposite of running away. That's that's running towards the enemies. Uh, I understand this is a gold fury and we don't want to lose it. I'll pull up the objective health somehow. What button is that? I don't know. I know it. It's in here somewhere. Key bindings. Objective health. Objective health. Objective health. Objective health. Haha. F7. There we go. So we don't want to lose the gold, which is why we're pushing in. We probably didn't have vision on the health. So we really, really want to get vision on the health of the gold. Um, but listen to me, you must win this fight, right? 
if that if you're in this position right you're thinking we must win this fight you do not need to get this gold fury but you must win the fight so you're going for the play on the gold to get them off of gold if they don't reset gold and they get gold that's fine if you're in a position to win the fight you're not in a position to win the fight you can't take this fight right now your adc is not here and your your soul enters a little late if your adc is like here already i'm i'm more okay with this because at least then your amaterasu and movement speed stance isn't that far away i dislike heavily taking this fight for the sake of the gold fury when you know your allure is not going to be here okay so we step up we try to use some abilities right so now our discordia is going to get plucked Let's see if we beads it we don't so this is already a, a wash right our discordia gets plucked way out of position in a bad fight that we probably don't want to take uh without beadsing when beads were up it's pretty rough we actually beads in the air we get the dash off Okay, so now we take stock of the situation. We don't have a backline, right? Our backline dive is coming in on the side, and he's got a good line, but the Kepri has used nothing. Uh, we know the reactives are down, but we still have a Kepri ult to worry about. We're not killing anybody right now. A period, right? The, our, our Discordia is getting popped in the butt by the enemy CC. Sobek sitting on him. The Kepri can turn and sit on him and still PO for the back line because there's still a Kepri ult in play. And our Uller's not here to be our other backliner when this one gets one shot. So, Discordia is dead. We've used our abilities in our kit once. We're kind of throwing the Hail Mary apple because we, we, had, a, we had a poor beads. I think you even could have ulted the Sobek Pluck and that would have been fine. Uh, but doing neither was, of course, very bad. We didn't Aegis anything either because we we're trying to get our ability casts off. Okay, so now the ability, now the fight continues. We're all grouped together. They have a ton of AOE abilities still up. We're just trying to run away. We're rats on a sinking ship, and we're just all taking the shortest exit, which is this way. He gets the Kefri ult off. We did a lot of damage as Amaterasu. Uh, Little late on thorns. I think they may have just come up, so fair enough. And now our Uller arrives late and misses the set pick. If they didn't have a Kepri, we got two two kills off of this, but we still we still all die. Um, so yeah, don't take the fight. Basically, <laughs> now this is a super hard game to win. We haven't completely lost yet, but it's a it's a hard game to win. So we should be looking for deep wards. Nothing much is happening here. We're still farming. They're still farming. I'm shocked they haven't already pulled gold to be or fire to be perfectly honest. They're going for a pick on a movement speed on a Tarasu, movement speed stance on a Tarasu, which is a little weird. We go for a pick on the Hera, we actually do so successfully and get two kills. What? Sorry, I missed it. What the hell happens? So Hachi rotates. Oh shit! There's there's some there's some serious action going on here. Okay, so we walk in, we see the set, we say, "I want to pick the set." We whiff our root. We're looking for some setup, probably. No pun intended. He blinks on us. We ult in response, which is reasonable. We get Hachi ulted. We use a no. We didn't Aegis. We just lived. A uh, late shell, but great idea. Uh, we get the one kill onto the set who dove really hard. Excellently timed Ravenel. Good timed Polymorph from that guy. We didn't have beads for it, so we traded one for two. Really good job, guys. That's a that's a great stall. Good play by Brandon to. Uh, to react to the set blink effectively with with a cripple. I'm kind of okay with a split push here. I don't love that we want to fight and we're giving up Pyromancer. 
Um, I don't know if we just don't know they're on it or we're just unaware or what, but if they do pyro, this is all of a sudden really dangerous because they can get here pretty quick from base. But if we do get the tier 2, it's worth a lot of money. We probably got a lot of money in pocket anyway, but we're looking to pick up another powerful item here. So this might be an int, but I'm kind of okay with it. We can probably get away from the Capri here. Yeah, we can with our team. So we actually... We thought about looking for the pick. I like the fact we didn't. We know somebody was teleporting there. There could be more people there. We don't really want to take the fight here. We'd rather take it in Fire Pit, probably, or around Gold, if they go for Gold next. So I don't love our position at this point of the game, but we're playing it uh, pretty well. Uh, it was a good good job in mid. I dislike the fact that we gave up the Pyromancer, but I like the Tier 2 push off the back of the information, so pretty reasonable. Okay, so we're looking for more stuff. He carefully pulls the Ama, which I will take all day long, twice on Sundays. They are grouped as five. We are grouped as, count it, one, two, three. So I understand we're looking for some farmy boys, but perhaps we should be at the fire giant. So this play says to me, we're going for gold. We're going to give them fire. I don't like that. Um, I don't think this game gets better. I think you got to take the fight now. But at the same time, I can understand you saying, you know, we don't we don't have the items to take the fight. We don't think we can win the fight. So we're going to take the gold. Uh, we're going to just try to stall them at fire, and we'll see what we can do. Maybe we get a, a slick steal and pull the game back to a win. So I can respect the call even if I personally don't like it. I'm assuming that's what the call is. Obviously, I'm not in your brain. So maybe I'm totally wrong about what the call is, but judging from where, where my characters are positioned on the map, and our slight misunderstanding of gold timer. Okay, so so I do hate this, right? So I know I know the way I know kill creep good, but showing yourself on the creeps when we know we're at a five v three disadvantage at fire, they don't know that yet, right? And judging by the fact that they haven't started like inting into us when we popped up around the gold fury area, they didn't know that until we showed ourselves at um <clears throat> at the uh, at the at the left wave so i don't like the the showing on the left wave um even though it's normally a good idea just to kill things and get farm i am unsure why he teleported the way there i th yeah i i mean they should just start a fight now and the sobek gets that right he can tank this tower for days polymorph is an excellent ability it's very very good against tanks Kepri Shred is good late game, combined with an Obshard 2 Soul Reaver stuff. Pretty good on top of the... Yeah, I mean, they're just... Uh, their magical characters are going to hit you real hard. Uh, we got the Primal. Um, but we... Uh, but we have... Uh, successfully killed ourselves in the Soul Lane. I'm pretty sure because they saw that we were, that we were hanging out in the Duo Lane. So th they're going to get the Fire Giant... Now, I do want to pause that we should have expected this result anyway, even if it's not exactly how it would have happened. Them getting fire, possibly a pick for our Gold Fury, is probably what we should have expected out of that play. Uh, Mr. Stages, hello. Uh, I am coaching UIUC, University of Illinois, which is my college, and I'm, I'm working with them some. I don't have time to play on the team, but I, I do help out from time to time. So we go for a Discordia ult and the Sobek. Count the health bars. I don't think you're ever killing them there. Um, kind of an instinctual hero play, I think. I I don't love it. Especially not when you're you're in such a poor position in the game after losing fire and a life. So actually, that went surprisingly well. Hold on, what happened? Jesus Christ, what happened? This should not have gone well. We inted, and then they pushed a phoenix with fire giant. Okay, so take stock of the situation. Two ults down. Is Hera down? Is Argus still in the pitch? No, Argus is not. So they have Kefri ult. They have they have Argus. They're missing three ults. We have, uh, well, we have two ults. Okay, so they walk in. How are they doing this? Who's tanking? 
nobody's tanking. So maybe one of their carries gets aggro. This is a good good play here. We're, we're creating a little bit of a zone with the RDO. We can't walk up too far until our Amy's here. The Kepri isn't scary at all. That was a weird horrific. I think he only hit... Okay, so he hit Ama and Ravan, but he completely missed the Uller, who's probably our damage carry here. Okay, so let's take more stock. The wave isn't cleared yet, which is a little bit yikes, but it looks like we're going to Uller do that. Actually, our Ama just one-shots it. Really good axe. That was a sick axe under tower and a good Amy ult on top of it. We forced the Hachi beads before the Amy ult's done, so we know we've got a stun. We probably force Zagus here. The Kepri is now left in the dust because he was super far in deep, and the rest of his team didn't push up as far. I think the Sobek probably could be up here in the front line as well, and he's not. And I think they could have dropped Argus pretty early here. So we get an insane Amy ult off. We don't beads the Sobek pluck. Normally I would hate that. I think I still do. The only argument against it is, well, they're both stunned. They can't hurt me. By the way, there's a Hera here with Argus still that can drop on your dome. Which, of course, she does. Um, but we time this Raven ult very, very well. And we're going to hit both of the characters that have no way to get out of it. So it's an excellent job. In that instance, our Uller is getting dove. If we would have used beads off the Sobek pluck, none of this would have happened, by the way. Active usage is, in fact, overpowered. So Sobek dives and gets a kill. We pick up both of those two kill off of our, our Amy Raven play. We should be able to kind of run... Ooh, never mind. Holy balls. I thought we could get to that Hera too, but by the way, they have two really good Guardians with a ton of CC. And a lot of cooldown. So this actually ends up going very poorly, but that was a good attempt, right? So I'm gonna kind of, I'm guessing, actually, no, they, they can't kill this Phoenix ever. Oh, baby. Okay, they're, I'm a little confused. I think we die to Sobek. Okay, bud. If you actually live because of that Aegis, I'm a little tilted. Okay, I'm a little tilted. Uh, <laughs> but hey, fair enough. You know what? It worked. Could have Aegis better, but minor details, right? Actives are overpowered. Woo! It was, a, it was just a weird dive by them. They didn't play that Phoenix Siege very well. We capitalized on it. We might have pushed a little too far, but frankly, I thought we could kill the Hera too. I guess we can't because Hera's got... Like 20 health bars or something. Uh, I probably made the same call. I think it's pretty... I If I see a hero running away with nothing, you better believe I'm dashing her ass. So <laughs> I can't really judge you. Although, in hindsight, it's pretty clear, right, that you've got a Sobek and a Kepri with a ton of CC and a ton of ton of cooldown between them. Like, Kepri is 40%, which isn't something you normally see on supports. Sobek's... Probably, he was probably 30% if he had blue... He might, he might have been 40% if he had blue plus red pot. So, lots of cooldowns. Fair enough. Okay, so we're going to take Pyro. Which is fair enough. I need some water. <clears throat> Whew. Okay. So, I don't think things have changed a whole lot as far as these graphs go. They've been pretty constant for most of the game. And I'm honestly a little impressed that we're still hanging in this, considering how much worse I think our, our late game is compared to theirs. But the Ama pick's actually doing a ton of work. I'm gonna make that stuff go away now. Okay. So we're looking for a pit. Okay, so we got set beads here. So I'm okay with it. It looks a little weird to Amy ult on a blue buff, uh, but you've got a lot of cooldown. Um, I'm pretty okay with it. Let's let's try to get those set beads because that was one of the things that uh, Mike and Chat mentioned at the beginning of the game that I agree with. Punish the set, right? That's one of the reasons set isn't played a whole lot is he doesn't have CC immunity. He's really reliant on the beads. He's kind of like King Arthur, except faster and easier to kill. Um, and in that way, if he doesn't have beads, very much like a King Arthur, 
uh, he can be pretty easy to punish. This is actually an interesting play, right? So we know the set beads are down, and we're pushing in to them. We get kind of a good flank here. We're poking the Sobek pretty well. We get the tower in mid. Sobek plucks in. That's a dead Sobek, probably, if we get enough shred on him. I kind of like that we're turning. Yeah, it was a good turn. I, I think I think Max is probably dead there, regardless. So I think that's a pretty fair turn. Uh, hold on, I gotta pause for just a second. Okay, so we're pushing into the mid lane. We got a pick for a pick. Uh, my Uller for a Sobek is actually not that bad. Um, Sobek's a really dangerous character, and he's built some serious damage this game. We're actually putting out a ton of really good poke. Our Discordia poke's actually quite good. The set blinks in here. Okay, pause. This is where we're extremely happy that we Amy ulted the set earlier and got his beats. So, let's slow this down a bit. So, we do kind of group for all of Hera's abilities, which sucks major dick. Um, but we use our beads Aegis well, even though we probably shouldn't have had to. They actually pre kepri ult the set when he's going into his ult, because they think he's going to get chain CC'd. Uh, which is probably true if we hadn't just all grouped on him like ninnies. Um, our Raven has to play this really safely. He's actually going to go... That was a weird slow motion animation, but he really pops the set. The Kepri ult's already down, so that was excellent timing. The set is completely out of this fight, can't do anything. They pull the Amy. Our Discordia might still be able to cast here. Especially if we're able to deal with the Hera. So Hera's probably going to get a kill on Amy. The Ardeo is still alive. We probably don't have a stun. This is actually a sick Strife setup. So that was, we baited our Ardeo really well. We're going to get a kill off of it. He late beads, doesn't Aegis it. Um, set misses his abilities, and we actually get out of that one pretty much scot-free. I think they had some poor execution there, um, but I think we played pretty well off of it. That was a little questionable. I don't know if you could have gotten out there. I think they had some poor active usage and some poor execution, but I think we played it pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with with taking that play, especially off the back of the Sobek pick, which I think is very important at this stage in the game. And and especially like if we're communicating our builds really well, we know we've got a ton of tank shred here. We don't have a Titans yet uh, on our Uller. We might never have a Titans on our Uller in this game until we sell boots. We might just go with more attack speed. I, I wouldn't even hate selling boots for like an Executioner, even though it sounds super weird. And most of the time, it's pretty non-valuable. I think you do want some tank shred. I think you do want some attack speed. Xe does that for you, for better or worse. I think going Titans or Odie Bow is also perfectly acceptable under boots. Heartseeker is a really good item. I wonder if we don't get Heartseeker in place of one of these three maces here, if we don't if we don't take one of these out. I don't know if we super need the Brawlers. I think we're getting Brawlers to try to deal with Set Alt. Um, I think we're either killing him or he's getting Capri ulted. Kind of like what we saw last fight, right? Uh, even with his beads down, he was able to get a ton of value out of his healing. And he dies anyway off the back of it. So I don't know if the Brawlers are super necessary. I'm fine with Divine. It's a good item. Uh, but I don't know if it's super necessary either. They, do, they I mean, they, they do have healing, so I'm not, I'm not criticizing it. Um... But I wonder if we couldn't have gotten the Heartseeker online faster, gotten the Titans online faster, and been a little more effective against tanks. I think Riley's just lagging his brains out. So, yeah, I mean, look at that, right? We poke the Sobek for, like, a fifth of his health bar with just a Discordia one. We should be taking note of that and continue poking Sobek. We can poke the Capri. We can poke anybody we want to. And this is where the Ardeo pick is going to be actually pretty effective even late game because that, that root is so, is so useful. Assuming they can't kill the Ardeo, I think they can, but they're not doing it, so keep doing it. Okay, that was actually kind of nuts. We just, like, we didn't even, okay, hold on. We, I don't know how we did that. We, we managed to just, like, W key up to the, up to the Hachiman's Robin, and so, oh, hello, 
sure, Mr. Hachi. I'm going to smack you now. And just, like, own him. And just force him to ult away. Because he doesn't have beads. And he doesn't want Aegis. Because then he's dead immediately after the Aegis. Because you've proven that you can you can time that super well. There's Sobek's trying to make space. Their Hachiman's just been forced out. So they don't really have much to gain. He's making space back here. But if we're if we're paying attention on our, on our maps. We know that we're making much more space. Than their backline can ever get up there. Is that a Hachi positioning issue? Probably. I... I don't understand how our Robin gets to walk up to a Hachi late game and just smack him at, at all. That doesn't make sense to me. But hey, you know what? We did it. Cool. I'm glad we took the opportunity. This Sobek is kind of inting again. He's kind of had a couple of questionable decisions at this point in the game, and we're taking good advantage of it. We're noticing that our Amy is creating a really good zone. We know we forced the Hachi out. We can see the Hera here, and this set is not going to kill any of us immediately. We don't have actives on on our on our Brandon, um, but hey, we're inting him anyway, so let's just keep doing it. So I like the fact that we're going for another Sobek pick. I think that's a good play. So here, I think their front line is playing pretty poorly. Their Sobek is super far up uh, when he doesn't need to be, and their Kepri is the nearest support for their Sobek. Meanwhile, his backline is getting dove by an Ama. He either needs to turn on the Ama and kill the Ama with his backline, or uh, Sobek needs to needs to come back, but this can't happen, right? His the the two frontliners are really poorly positioned. We're taking advantage of that by hitting their frontliners while our Amy makes a ton of space. So I, I think that was really really well done here. Their Capriol gets forced out. We get so many actives. I don't know that they needed to use all of these actives, um, but I think the decision is good. Even if they don't active, or if they active and kill you. Uh, they're going to take a ton of damage doing it. I think this was a good play by Richard. And our back line has played well off the back of the front line. Um, we're going to delete the set because he didn't active well and he positioned poorly. Uh, and our Robin still has Blink for some reason because he just got to walk at the Hachi earlier. So this fight got off to an amazing start uh, from Riley. Uh, Richard kind of did a fuck ton of work um, by just like walking at him, right? He just walked at him and and, and and let us kill their front line, which was very good. Our back line plays, is playing well off of each other. We're hitting our CC abilities now, um, and we're doing a good job with our, our, our RDO is playing our back line pretty well. And I think Riley is floating very well. He started up here, came back, helped our back line, and then was able to blink in deep when he was needed later. So I, I think Riley's played it. I think all of our all of our team played that very well. And we got rewarded for it. Uh, we're pulling fire before our Uller gets here. There's no real reason to pull it that early, but it's not a huge deal, so I don't really care. Oh, that's a little rough right there. We're, we're kind of laggy laggy. Pull the fire where Uller got knocked up. So again, so their front line is doing the exact same thing. And I don't know if their front line just feels invincible or what, but their front line's doing the exact same thing. Uh, their Hera's not here yet, their set's on speed buff, and their Hachi is... Uh, what's he going to do? He, he can't go in on this. Uh, certainly not alone. His two front line is trying to make space, but what space are they really making when their back line can't really do anything with that space? Space is effective when it allows you to accomplish something. In this case, our Ama is creating space from the Hachi, and uh, their backline isn't here. So they can't kill the Amy, and we can turn on their front line. So I'm expecting the same sort of thing to happen again. I think we turn on their front line. We probably poke the front line if not kill them. We go on the Kefri this time, which is fine. I don't think there's a huge difference. Yeah, we, we get his ult. That's a pick, just like I was saying. The Sobek misses his pluck, which is really bad for him. Uh, the Kefri is completely zoned. We've gotten that all. That was a little unfortunate on the timing, but I like the idea. So I, if that timing is better, we kill the Sobek. This is a really good shell. We're peeling, we're peeling our backline out very well. Uh, so again, we we forced, yeah, we forced a frontline ultimate from the Kefri. We poked the Sobek out super hard. We lost our Robin for it, but that was more unfortunate than anything. If he times it right, he probably lives. Which is again. Same thing from the beginning of the game. Good idea, eh, execution. 
but really good idea. Like that, that's the correct play to make, right? And it's a little bit of a guessing game with Sobek Gold, I understand that. Okay, so they pull the Fire Giant. I still think we're in a pretty good spot to contest this here. If we if we take stock of our actives, uh, we know their their set doesn't... We probably don't know that, but we have a good idea, right? Set beads did a little bit ago. We might not know if Hera has Aegis or not, but we know she has beads. Um, the ult timer might be wrong here. Kepri might not have ultimate... Either way, I think we're in a good position to still cast pretty freely because our front line is being so effective at this point. Um, and I think the reason our front line is so effective is their back line is really not playing together very well. Sobek misses another pluck, which is a little rough. So he goes in for the ult. I think we... Did we hit Hachi with Disco Apple? I think we must have, because he Aegis. He gets a good Argus off. Uh, so, M Max, Max, I, ne I need you to work on your beads. So, your Aegises have been after the fact, and your beads have been pretty poor. There's a couple occasions where you get Sobek plucked, uh, and you don't beads it. Brandon, same thing. I understand. People do that all the time. It's a meme. So SPL players do it. But it's something you should be able to do. I think even SPL players will say, I don't know how I'm not beating Sobek Plucks. Because you hear you hear the sound. Once you hear the Sobek sound of it hitting, mash that beads key. Uh, it's more valuable than your life. Um, in that case, we probably could have beads the Argus ult instead of Aegising. Beads obviously on a lower cooldown, generally better. Uh, they're grouping up for Strife like it's nobody's business. We're still poking our, their frontliners. Our frontliners are still being baited pretty effectively. Um, we're kind of getting in there. I don't know how that Amy ult didn't go off, but apparently it did now. The hair gets stunned in the fire pit, but it's not pulled, so it doesn't do a ton. Our disco can kind of get run at here, but they're not doing it. They're really afraid for some reason. I think they had an opportunity to pick us there. They're, they feel uncomfortable because their front line is uncomfortable. That's why they're not running at us so much. So we get the Kefri ult out there. We're trying. We're baiting our front line again. We're taking almost no damage. I think if that's a spectral, eh, it, it probably doesn't matter. The the spirits procs did a ton. Uh, we did a little damage to the Phoenix with creep RNG. They're gonna get EFG here. So maybe a little better execution around the around the frontliner or, or around that fight there. But I think we did it pretty well. Uh, one something you can do for something like that. I don't really want to go back and rewatch that whole firefight. Go back and look at that from your perspective in the replay. You're gonna have the replay because it'll be in the stream and you can get the key if you don't already have it. Uh, and just watch from from your perspective. If you're a frontliner, maybe watch from the other frontliner's perspective. If you're a backliner, watch from the other backliner's perspective, and watch it from yours. Maybe watch it twice, um, and just ask yourself what what you could have done better. That's that's like an individual thing that I don't particularly want to do um, with everyone, but that's something you can do pretty easily on your own. I'm okay with that beats. He missed, but I'm, I'm okay with that beats. I'm glad that you're doing it. I will be forever happier with a beads when the enemy misses their CC when they should have hit it than not beadsing and, and getting punished for it. And that's a, that's an occasion he hits that Sobek pluck, you probably lose the video game. Like within the next two minutes. So uh, I'm glad we beats it. Okay, so we're they're, they're for running, we're taking that. The Sobek hits the pluck this time, fair enough. I'm, I'm not going to get mad at that, you know? You had Aegis, you pre-Aegis it, you probably still die. Uh, so we're fighting, our backliner is fighting here. Sobek gets Ardeo crippled. Sobek kind of gets inted by his team. They had Kepri ult there. They just they just chose to kill him. Um, but fair enough, we took advantage of it. He was tanking and his Kepri was too far away. We had somebody forcing the Kepri out, I'm guessing. Um... And uh, yeah, we deal with it pretty well. We got actually all of their carry actives there, and only Max dies to a good Sobek pluck that... I, I mean, I guess it's positioning that I can rail you on, but... I mean, you're older, it's really hard to position around a Phoenix Siege.
And you're standing in creeps, too. I mean, that's... You can't do much more than that, dude. So here we're going to just one-shot the set, because we know he doesn't have actives. I... Yeah, do it. They Hachiman ult out, and then get off the horse, so now we get to ult the Hachiman no relics. I'm glad we stunned the Hachi over the Hera. Uh, Argus comes down, the Hera is harder to get to, that's why. And we're still able to chase here as, as Ama. Like, we might just win the game. Uh, all starting with them inting their Sobek. They, he, he Capri ults, I'm guessing, as a cleanse and a movement speed buff there. We're going to kill the Capri. Because, again, our front, our front line damage is very good. I do really wish we had a Titans. I think that would be really, really helpful. Uh, selling for boots. <clears throat> or instead of the Brawlers. I already beat that dead horse. I'm not going to talk about it again. That was a reasonably good uh, Phoenix event, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. We lost our Phoenix, uh, but I think we played it pretty well. So, no complaints. Or if there are complaints, there are too micro to worry about at this stage of the game. Okay. We're making some space here. We're going on the Hera because we know she doesn't have actives because we just saw her use them at the bird. I think maybe we overcommit. I don't think we needed the, the RDO roar there. I think we could have used the RDO on, on the Sobek. But fair enough. We're keeping death timer staggered. I got no complaints. Use your abilities or you're not going to get them back. So I, I'm, I'm not upset about it at all. Hachi gets a huge ult. Set gets a huge TPN. We're trying to turn on the set here. And, uh, okay, so hindsight's 2020 that Phoenix was a bad idea. Maybe we look at their respawn timers and know it's a bad idea. In hindsight, I think that's a call that probably could have been made in game. Uh, but we're really trying to get the Phoenix because we feel like we have to, I think. So we're probably going to lose the game here. They can just kind of run down and kill us. Killing spree. Yeah. So that's game. Okay, so overall thoughts. Um, their late game was much better than ours when we hung in there. Uh, I think their front line didn't play very well together. I think their back line didn't play very well together, and I think we took advantage of that. I think Richard had a good game towards the later stages and was, was making good, advantage, good use of his character. I don't love the CAD shield for reasons I've already discussed, but I, I don't think it's a, it's a point to super criticize very hard. Uh, Riley, I think, had an excellent game. There was a couple mistimed ults. I think you were lagging. Um, I don't know how you got to the Hachi mount of that firefight, but more power to you. Maybe he was just caught off guard. Either way, good job looking for it. Uh, Peter, I think you played around backline very, very well. I think you and uh, you and Richard indirectly worked very well together, and I think you worked very well with your backline. I don't know if that's because you felt more comfortable in RDO. I don't know if that's just something that you really like as a style. Maybe that's why they're banning Ganesha every game. Um, Brandon, I think you had good tank shred in your build. I can respect the Mantle of Discord. I would have honestly preferred an E-Staff um, over the Mantle this game. That's not normally something I'll say, where I think getting Mantle is usually a pretty good option. Uh, but in this game, I think you were focusing so much on tanks, and I think you could have identified that in game, that I think the uh, the E staff may have been a better choice. But I think you had a pretty good game, other than some whiffed abilities. Uh, everybody had some whiffed abilities though, and and so so I would have had those as well. That was an awkward thing to say. I I miss abilities too, basically, uh, so I can't get too upset about that. Uh, but they were pretty important abilities at, at some points, so something to keep in mind, and the really bad beads of the gold fight that had me tilted. Uh, Max, I think I think I your slash line looks awful. <laughs> um, but I don't think you had a terrible game. I don't think it was your best game in the world, uh, but I think Griddle's a good player, and uh, you didn't look like a complete idiot, basically. Um, and I think you played the late game pretty well, considering... You probably don't have a ton of experience there as an Uller. Um, I, I do think the Brawlers was a bit overkill. I, you've already got a Brawlers on your Robin. And if you need more anti-heal here, I think you can ask Peter to get 
a contagion instead of a sob or something along those lines. Um, I don't think you needed the Brawler's bottom, bottom line. I think you did need a Titan's Bane here uh, because of the amount of time you were hitting tanks. Now, I don't know if that was something you could identify at the point in time when you were building the Brawler's. I still don't think he needed the Brawlers anyway. So I think if you didn't go the Brawlers, you would have gone Jotuns into Crusher into Heartseeker. And then you would have had a slot for the Titans. At that point, you would have been able to identify that you were hitting tanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as far as damage numbers go, they're, they, they are what they are. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Obviously, Max didn't have great damage numbers. Um... You're going to have better games than that on Uller. I think a lot of that was because of poor beads. Uh, you had a couple of bad beads on Subek Pluck, not not counting the one at Mid Phoenix. I think that was fine when Subek missed Pluck and you beads it anyway. And then he plucks you again at, through a creep wave. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I don't think this is something where you can. You can look at it and say, oh, well, it's, it's Max's fault. He only did 10k damage on Uller. I think this is a situation where you guys had an opportunity to play through Max on that side of the map. You chose otherwise. I think it was a poor call not to fight at purple. I've beat that dead horse to death. Go rewatch it if you care. Um, and uh, instead you chose to fight through Richard's side of the map and get a lot of blue buff invades, which is fine. That being said, then, you can't really get mad at Max for not being able to fight uh fight in lane as effectively. I think he was ganked a couple times by the set. <coughs> and Peter was spending some time with him. So it was probably uh, more difficult for Max to get a lead. I didn't watch it super closely. That might be something to go back and watch over. Uh, for Max in particular, you know, check check your game. Check, um, check if you're missing too many abilities. Check if you're uh, need to position better, check if there were... I, I think there was the one 1v2 that you probably could have played better. And Peter, check if you could have played that better as well. Um, uh, but otherwise, I think this was still a team game that we had a chance to win. I think... I don't think we should have been able to do as well as we did late game, but they were making consistent mistakes with their front line and their back line, and we were taking advantage of that. Um, so whoever was calling targets there and recognizing that Richard had the zone that he did consistently, I think did a very good job uh, with that with that sort of target calling. That's about all my voice can take, apparently, because I am turning into a dead person. <clears throat> and I don't think it's a water thing. I think I'm just losing my voice.